Hopefully. Ferg, I'm going to just go a little bit forward for you because you're going to get a better view if I go forward. So I do apologize about shaking your camera. Hopefully he's going to, there's like a little pathway that just runs here. So hopefully he's going to just come straight towards us. There we go, you got to shake off a bit of the moisture that's in the grass after that rain that we had last night. Hello big boy. Isn't this so cool? So Michelle G, you're wondering if the size of the dewlap is hereditary. Well, there will be some elements of it that is hereditary. It's also to do with age. The older they get, the more the dewlap develops. But some males will definitely develop a bigger dewlap than others. So you'll find a situation where Tinganas got much bigger dewlap than the other ones. Now that's what you call a blowout, which obviously Tingana is not even phased by. As you can see, he's just walking away. But this sometimes happens, particularly if you get something like a torchwood that hits it. It pierces the tire and then you get a little blowout like that. Or if you pinch the valve. So unfortunately, poor Andrew, who's just joined to try and see this leopard. I feel got to feel sorry for somebody when that happens because he's been trying to sort of wait for us to get the visual of Tingana and he's been waiting patiently. And as he gets with us and sees the leopard, the tire blows out so I feel very bad for Andrew but it's the way it goes out here sometimes you have luck like this where things just go against you a little bit now I'm gonna try and see if I can't squeeze through here let's see where are you going Tingana sure he's just going straight southwards and you can see now why Tingana is a, a tough leopard to find if you don't find him on the road you can see where we've walked this morning he's pretty much just been through thickets and that and he strides through this now track a leopard through this kind of cover is not easy at all and so he moves a lot faster than even some of us can walk and track and so it just makes it so tough to find him that's why he is one of the harder leopards and same with Anderson, he also strides like this. In fact, Anderson's even worse than Tingana when it comes to moving. Anderson almost walks at a trot. He's like a wild dog at times. I don't know why he moves so fast, but he does. I remember the one day we found him at Simamili at the lodge, which is right up on the northern boundary of the Sabi Sands. And by, it was about an hour later, we were already crossing into Londolozi. So he just absolutely hammered it straight southwards towards Londolozi and he just goes and like I say he's almost like a wild dog the way that he moves so chitty chatty Meg you wondering if it's harder to for leopards to hunt because they hunt in a solo fashion and they don't have the the use of a pride system like the lions do well yes and no so sometimes it is not it's I mean it's difficult for them because you know it's just the one of them and they can't chase a prey animal towards another one but when you have multiple individuals hunting there is more chance of one of those individuals being spotted so rather than just one animal that's creeping along through the thickets you've got a situation now where you've got maybe four or five lionesses and that prey animal has got the chance to spot not only one individual but five individuals and so it means that with lions they often get spotted a lot quicker than something like a leopard would so it just depends on the on the sort of situation but both of them have a very similar success rate in fact leopards probably a little bit more successful than what the lions are now we're just allowing tax just to go through here quickly So Chitty Chatty Meg, you're asking if I've ever seen a leopard hunt. Yes, I have. I've seen many, many leopard hunts. Most of them have failed, but I have seen some pretty cool ones where they've been successful. So I've seen leopards killing dikers, baby impalas a lot, um, scrub hares, monitor lizards, pythons, um, kudu, 
young giraffe, in fact, Tingana. As far as I know, we, we were talking earlier, well, Byron was telling you about whether you could kill a fully grown adult kudu male. Well, the biggest kill that I've seen Tingana on was a about a two-year-old giraffe that he killed with Moya female when they were mating together. So they had this giraffe that they managed to wrangle to the ground. How, I, just, I still don't know. We got there as the giraffe was down and still kicking. So we just missed it. But it was the most insane thing to see this leopard sitting on top of a giraffe. It was really quite something. Now, here goes our leopard into the distance. Oh, he's moving fast. Keeping up with him is, I tell you what, it's a tough job. It's almost like you're going to gym when you try to keep up with Tingana because your arms work the whole time. You kind of get bounced around. So it's like a core exercise following Tingana. Maybe this just should be a new exercise fad that we get out there and make popular. The sort of ab workout with Tingana. Do you reckon he would, he would, be, he would work, Ferg? You reckon? We'll test it on Connor, yeah. Connor's our gym bunny, so we'll try and see if it works. We'll, we'll do... Byron says I don't know what gym is. That's because Byron's just scared that I'll do more than he will at a gym. Because Byron doesn't know that I used to be trained quite a lot. And gym doesn't scare me in the slightest. So, there we go. He's striding. I'm going to probably try and leave him from here. Because, like I say, there are other guys that want to see him. I just want to ask the tax quickly. Uh, tax, is there anyone else on standby? No, I'm just staying back so that those guests can get some photos. There's some guests that are just in front of us here. And we don't really want to be in their photograph of the leopard, so I'm just going to let them get a chance to get some photos before I drive behind him. Ralph, Ralph, Ralph. Confirm you coming to Tingana. Okay, copy. You're going to miss him. He's going to cross Gary Main in all of one minute. Yeah, he's already crossed the fire break. He's now going over Gary Main in the next, I would say, two seconds. So there we go. We're just telling Ralph that unfortunately he's not going to make it because he thought he was going to have ample time to get you. With this leopard, there's never ample time to get anywhere. Now, along Gari Main itself, now I'm just going to try and pull the side. No, he's going to just go straight across like he always does and just march off into little Gari. So there we go. Off he goes. And that's the last we're going to see of him, unfortunately. And that's it.